These are going to cover the full advanced accounting rules for commercial substance and asset exchanges. Can I or can I not record a gain? This is not for intermediate accounting. These are for inter informational purposes only. The actual advanced accounting rules regarding commercial substance are what go are going to be presented. These are the complete FASB rules that are not taught in county principles or intermediate accounting. So to review commercial sub substance, what is it? Will the new asset you're receiving that you're trading for, will it increase future cash flows? If the answer is yes, it has commercial substance. If it's no, it lacks commercial substance. So rules regarding gains and losses vary based on your education level. That's important to understand up front. If this is your first accounting class, and you're in accounting principles, the simplest rules are presented where we tell you absolutely no gains or loss are recorded if it lacks commercial substance. Then in intermediate accounting, we reintroduce a little more advanced rules where we tell you a loss is always recorded based on the rules of conservatism, but no gain when lacking commercial substance. The actual full rules are a little more complicated. That's studied in advanced accounting. A loss is always recorded, just as we told you in intermediate, but because of conservatism. But what about the gain? Well, it depends on multiple factors, and that's what will be presented here. So the FASB rules were created to prevent companies from exchanging assets just to record a gain. Recording of a loss is allowed to follow the rules of conservatism, but the actual rules regarding how gains are handled, it's a little more to it. So if you are at the intermediate accounting level, this is for information only and don't record any gain, but recording a loss is okay. But doesn't matter what level you are, you always want to compare fair value to, per, to book value to determine if you have a gain or a loss. And how will a gain or a loss be handled? Well, it depends. Always record a loss regardless of commercial substance. A gain, that's the oddball rule. It's going to depend because there is an exception to the no gain rule. And it has to do with whether or not cash or an other asset was given or received with the exchange of the primary assets. And if so, how much? So a little terminology first. We're going to use the word boot. This is a common term used in income tax accounting, but it's also used for fixed assets in financial accounting, as it is here. So I want you to think of cash received or given as boot. But also think of any other non-cash asset received or given in trade as boot. The boot is the loot. Did you pay the boot with the exchange or did you receive the boot with the exchange? That's important. And how much in proportion to the total received? The term boot is used because it could be cash or it could be a non-cash asset received to facilitate the trade. What other consideration is required to get the parties to agree to the trade? That's the boot. Did you pay the boot? You never record a gain when giving boot, even if one exists, if there lacks commercial substance. Did you receive boot? Well, that's where the exception to the rule comes, and it's going to be how much in proportion to the total received. So we're, so we're going to talk about lacking commercial substance, receiving boot first, then we'll, sh we'll talk about accepting it. So you want to follow the 25% rule. No boot received, no gain recorded. If it's greater than or equal to 25%, then you can record all of the gain. But if it's less than 25, you're going to record it in proportion to the total consideration received. So we're going to look at some percentages. And we'll go through an example. Machine A, you own machine A, and you want to trade it in for machine B plus 2,500 cash. Now that's cash you will receive. So your machine has a $10,000 book value, net of 10 accumulated depreciation, which means your historic cost is 20. Accumulated depreciation is 10, but the fair value at the time you trade it in is a little higher. It's 12, which means 
you can get a gain. Machine B that you're trading it for, its fair value is only 9,500, so it's not an equal trade. So in order to equalize the trade, there must be an equal exchange, so you will receive $9,500 asset plus boot to equal the 12,000 asset you are giving up. Always consider for these accounting problems that no party is going to trade if it's not going to be an equal exchange. And that's where boot comes in. So you're receiving boot, first calculate the actual gain, then calculate how much you can record. So you've got to look at that 25% rule. So you have a fair value of 12, book value of 10, that rep, that's going to represent a 2,000 gain on your books. So now you have to calculate the percentage, the proportion of boot to the total value of the assets received. Simply take the 2,500 cash, the amount received divided by the total consideration received, the 12,000, and it's 21. So you're gonna have to look at recording a portion of that. So of the $2,000 gain, you get to record 21% of it or 417. The remainder of the gain you cannot record. So it's receiving boot less than 21%. Notice the new asset book value is decreased to 79.17 to absorb the remainder of the gain that you cannot record. Cash came in. Old asset was taken off the books, and the remainder, 417 of the can, you are allowed to record. Okay, now a different example. The machine you're trading for only has a fair value of 7,800, so to equalize the trade, you're going to receive even more boot. Because remember, you're giving up an asset worth 12. You want 12, a total of 12 in exchange. Calculate the gain, then determine how much can be reported. So... You have a $2,000 gain, that has not changed. What is your percentage? 4,200 cash divided by the 12, that's 35% according to the full commercial substance rules for exchanges, you get to record the entire gain. So the machine B goes on the books at its full fair value because you get to record the full gain on exchange, the 2000. All right, now we're going to look at where you're paying boot instead of receiving it. To get the parties to accept the trade, fair value given must equal fair value received. So you're giving up a machine A value of 12, you're getting machine B valued 14, so you're going to have to come up with $2,000 cash. Kind of like trading in a car. You're always going to have to pay more. This equalizes the trade. Step one, calculate the actual gain. Determine if it can be recorded at all. Never record a gain when giving boot. So let's look at our journal entry. Take the old asset off the books. Record the cash going out. The new asset is worth 14. I cannot record the 2,000 gain, so it has to be absorbed into machine B, the book value of the new asset coming on the books. Now, if we look at machine A, we're exchanging something of equal value. No boot. Lacks commercial substance. Fair value given equals fair value received. No boot necessary to equalize the trade. Is there a gain or a loss? There is a $2,000 gain, but you're not allowed to record it if no boot is exchanged. Taking the old one off, the new, new book, the new machine B, it has a fair value of 12, but I have to put it on my books at 10 because I cannot record a gain if the exchange lacks commercial substance. So again, to review, what is commercial substance? Will the new asset increase future cash flows? If it's yes, then it has commercial substance. 
you don't have to worry about these calculations. You get to record a gain or a loss. If it's no, it lacks commercial substance. Record a loss always, rule of conservatism. Record a gain, it's going to depend. Was the boot paid? Was boot received? And how much in proportion to the total consideration received? With a loss, you always record it. With a gain, you never record gain when boot is given. If you're the one paying the boot, never record the gain. You want to follow the 25% rule when it's received. If there's no boot, you're not allowed to record the gain. Now remember, this is for informational purposes only. These are the full FASB rules. So depending on if you are in accounting principles or in intermediate accounting, do not use these gain rules. Simply do not record a gain at all if it lacks commercial substance at that academic level. And here is a review again. And these are the intermediate rules to review. And that is exchanging of plant assets.